we as women, I think, don't want to shake an apple cart, apple tree, apple cart, whatever. You know, we don't want either one. If you shake either one, apples fall. (laughs) I don't want to probably more from the cart to the tree, but either way, it's gonna be a mess. I don't want (laughs) to shake the boat. I don't want to rock. I don't want to rock the tree. Hey, Warners, welcome to Women Your Mother Warns You About, the podcast that makes sales sexy again. I'm Gina Tremarco, founder and sales trainer at Pivot 10 Results and Carolina Improv. And Rachel is not here to add in her part because she is in Paris on her honeymoon. So instead, <laughs> playing the part of Rachel Pitts today is Keith Walters. Hey, Hi. Gina, how are you? <laughs> Actually, Rachel has a lower voice than that. <laughs> she does, actually. <laughs> I'm happy we got her permission. She said we can play without her. So if you've tuned in and you're like, where's Rachel? Where is Just Rachel? pretend she's here and Keith will every now and then take on her voice and her persona. <laughs> I'm not that talented like you, Gina. <laughs> Gina has the ability to mimic people so well. Especially Keith Walters. Um, oh. <laughs> so how's it going, Keith? It is incredible, Gina. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm pretty incredible myself. Yes, you are. I have come through all kinds of craziness. But I have realized that that is that is life. Life is fun and crazy like that. So, I'm getting ready to hit the road again. Good. So, um, I mean, people will hear this in a few weeks, and I will have been to and from Omaha, Nebraska, the Midwest, the Midwest, where we have some incredible listeners. We do have incredible listeners in um, Omaha specifically, so I'm excited to uh, see some see some of my peeps that I've created connections with there and do some Vistage speaking that I love to do so much. I'm going to teach those CEOs how to sell like a child. Sell, sell, sell. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, aren't we? We or are. are we? we are. <laughs> We are talking about that. What are we talking that. about today? We are talking about our favorite topic to argue over, the power questions. <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking about no. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> no, Gina. Are... <laughs> no, that's not what we're doing today. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's always it's always on my mind to fight with you about power questions. So, <laughs> but but you know, sometimes you ask questions and you receive the answer of no. It's a very powerful answer. Yeah, tell tell me why you think that. Well, I think you know you're you're going to visit with a group of CEOs, and you know one of the biggest challenges most companies face, especially smaller growing companies and the CEOs and Vistas and so forth, is is the lack of focus. And focus is so critical to growing companies, and one of the key things about focus is just the word no. Because what does that, what is no? People are afraid of no. I People think, are afraid of no. And I don't understand why. Because no is what gives you, no gives you answers about what, what your buyer wants. There's a lot of power in no, but you know, no is equitable in a lot of people's minds to rejection. I don't think it is equitable to rejection, but a lot of people see it as rejection. And people don't like to be rejected. They take it personally. Yeah, so maybe. they're afraid of no. Yeah. Do you think maybe they take it personally? I mean, I guess I think they do. They do. They take it personally. They see a no as an affront to themselves as, a, yeah. as, as opposed to what you just ask for isn't right in the moment. It goes back to, I think, in the sales process of putting the spotlight on your customer on your prospect of what's best for them and what do they want and not worrying about yourself well i think that's true um you know there's a lot there's a lot of things about no if you're asking the prospect the right questions then (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> then, um, you know, you may be able to get to a yes instead of a no because you're positioning things well. Speaking of questions. Let's, yes, talk about questions. What, what would be some good questions? I know that um, in Never Split the Difference, doesn't he talk about, doesn't Chris Voss talk about the focus is really getting to know. So what are some questions that we can ask that would elicit more no's to well, get he to talks yes? about he talks about getting yes answers as rapidly as possible. So asking questions that are going to get to a yes just to program the yes in. Mm-hmm. So is your name Gina? Yes. See, oh, wow, look, see, see, I'm already... <laughs> <laughs> So from a negotiation standpoint, you know, the, 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 D, the idea is to how do you get the yes programmed in so it becomes more of a regular response. And, and what's the thought process behind that of getting, um, getting your prospect to feel like they're in power? Yeah. And to get an agreement, to get them into the rhythm, to start yeah, opening, get, okay. um, opening them up. There's a rhythm and a programming but you know that that's a negotiation. In negotiation, you've you're 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 kind of toward the end of a deal. Um, I think one of the things that people forget about no is is that you know what are the alternatives to no. And you know one alternative to no is yes, which is a great alternative. Well, it's what we want. And then there's one other alternative, which is maybe. And that's where in sales, so many people get stuck is the maybe. I love, I love maybes. Yeah. And so it's a waste of time. See, because either there's a sell or there's not. See, to me, maybe says there's hope. Yeah. um, In, in, in sales training and sales methodology, you know, and, and as a sales leader, manager, someone who spends money on salespeople and their time, um, maybe is for a lot of people a soft way to say no, but they're afraid to say it. True. And then, and then you get into a cycle in sales, which we call the chase. And, you know, if you think about two kids playing tag or whatever, now, now you get into the chase. And the chase is kind of, in my mind, a waste of time. Either the answer is either yes or no. And if what about I'm, not now? I'm a believer in the not now. Answer. That's a maybe. It's a, oh, and so if it's a not now, then okay, when? Well, yeah. Well, there there goes your follow up power question. Right. Right. I just um, I was on some sales calls last week with with previous slash current clients. Right. Work work we've done with with clients that. We, I was doing follow-ups with because where we left off last year and some of, uh, of what we were doing for them, it was, a, okay, let's relook at this in a few months and come up with a new strategy. And so I've done a little bit of a chase on that mm-hmm. with them to get them like back on board. So I thought I sort of lost them, but I stayed on top of, and I guess that's, that's important too, is the consistency. So I stayed on top of that and we had another call and now we've got something on the books for fourth quarter because to, they just, they needed time to kind of recoup and look at things and strategize. And so I was able to get that business back. Yeah. And I think that's a valid because you went into somewhat of a marketing mindset instead of a selling mindset in that interim period. But one of the things I see in salespeople is, you know, there's a prospect and the prospect isn't saying yes, but they're not saying no. And so the salesperson will report that this is an imminent deal, but all that's going back and forth is a pushback, a pushback, a chase and a chase and a chase. And while the, while the salesperson is involved in chasing that prospect, they are not selling to other prospects who could be buying. And so one of the trade-offs is the time you spend in that chase without any money coming into your pocket is time that could be spent getting a yes from somebody else and putting money in your pocket. Well, then we're digging even deeper there because that comes really down to prospecting too. I mean, qualifying. Qualifying, right. You know, And that's, that sometimes is where 
this chase happens a lot is where you have unqualified prospects. But I love, I love getting to a no. I mean, no is from a sales perspective is a real powerful, a real powerful word answer, you know? So what, so what's your advice? What's your advice to other people in sales when they get a hardcore no? Then I appreciate it. Know that you're not going to be wasting your time. Thank the prospect for, you know, getting a no, and then go back to that old adage. Now you're one no closer to the yes. But don't not- you think? Don't you think that sometimes a no is really about pushing back with an objection that you can overcome, and it's not really a no; it's a knee-jerk reaction no. Well, I don't think most prospects will tell you no. I think prospects, if they're pushing back, will... Oh, you haven't met me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so... I have met you, and you're probably... You're, you're, you're different. So uh, on I'm that pretty aspect, good about saying no. Yeah, you see, you're, you embrace no. <laughs> yeah. But most people, are, most people are reluctant to say no. So instead, they'll say maybe, which really is kind of a no. And one of the things that I've had a lot of success with with my sales teams is and this is really hard to get people to do this, is to try to get the customer or the prospect to tell you no. So, you know, I'm, I'm selling you something, Gina, and, and, and I call you and you say, well, maybe, you know, let me talk, let me think about this. And then, you know, then I call you a week later. It's like, well, yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I just need to talk to my boss, but he's traveling, you know, and all this kind of chase stuff. What I tell my salespeople is, that's not going to fly. I want you to get a no. You have to get the prospect to tell you the word no. Not not maybe, not, not right now, the word no. And it's so interesting how many of those pushes to get the word no turns into a sell. Yeah. Yeah. Or it turns into the word no, which means now I'm closer to a yes, and now I don't have to waste time. Yeah. Yeah. So did your salespeople, and I, and I think for our listeners who maybe are new to this podcast or just coming in and don't know who Keith Walters is, let's do kind of a quick background on your, experiencing, your experience in managing sales team. Could you just give us a little Keith Walters background? Yeah, I've built sales teams in a number of companies and in the last company we built a really good sized sales team that was very successful and um so i want everyone to know that that what what your background is on that so when you're pushing when you were pushing on your people to get the no did you give them some suggestions of like how to get the no oh yeah and and you know one of the things i do with the sales teams that i'm either running or that are somewhere in my organization is they're, they're fine to use me as a foil. So, (laughs) you know, so if I'm calling on you, Gina, and you've been putting me off and it's like, Gina, Hey, how's it going? Um, you know, we talked last week, I was just getting ready to, uh, just giving you a call back. See if, see what you're thinking about that deal. You know, it's only a thousand dollars and maybe we should go forward. And then, you know, you'll probably give me a pushback. Oh, I'm really busy right now. I'm like traveling. I don't have time to look at my budget. Yeah, no. And I, Can you call Gina, me I, back? Well, dude, I just hate to. I'm going to have to keep calling. And my boss, he's this real ass. He's, he's going to make me start calling you like two or three times a day. Well, and, I just won't pick up the phone. Well, I'm just going to have to keep email and all this other stuff. And and all you have, look, I, I will quit calling you. All you have to do is tell me, no, I don't want this. And and it's, I know I hate this, but this this guy, Keith, he, all he wants, he won't let us close this, he won't let us close this opportunity in Salesforce until <laughs> you tell me no. And as long as it's an opportunity in Salesforce, and I've got to keep contacting you. And if you don't want, look, I understand if you don't want this. If, if you don't want to use this to help your company grow, I understand that. But <laughs> And maybe $1,000 is too much. That's as low as I can go. But if you can't afford it or if you don't want to use it, that's fine. But all I got to do, just tell me no, please. Okay, no, go away. (laughs) Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll talk in the future, but thank you so much, Gina. Okay, take care. Find a new job. 
Yeah. So now then you're going to go into my marketing drip campaign and probably in two or three months, I'm going to reach out to you and say, Hey Gina. Yeah. We chatted. Listen, I know you told me no, I know this isn't what you want, but do you have any other friends or contacts in business who might want this? And you know, I won't bug them because you know, I, 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 if they don't want it, I'm not going to try and push them just like I haven't pushed you. No, Keith, I don't know anybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. The likelihood is most people are going to then. Well, feel, I, I got to tell you, you through that through that kind of role play that we totally improvised and did not plan and discuss. <laughs> um, I was starting, and I'm a very uh, well. It was just, the word's emotional, right? But whatever. I'm an empath, so I can mm-hmm. like I can feel people's anxiety like really easily it kind of sucks but yet Mm -hmm. it's really good for me in sales i was all of a sudden starting to feel guilty Mm -hmm. (laughs) for not giving you an opportunity i was like fuck let me just give him a thousand dollars like this poor sniveling dude like his boss has him by the balls i should give him some money well if you think about real true sales if it's a if if i'm selling something that you need and want and is of value to you buy it. If you, if it's not of need or value of want, then don't buy it because I don't want to sell something that's not going to leave a good impression because I'm building a business. I want my customers to have a good response to my product or my service. Yeah. But all I want to do is get the prospect off the mark of maybe, 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 uh, non-committal, you know, yeah. one way or the other. And I, I think it also depends on what it is you're selling, mm-hmm. what is the sales model for the organization. So uh, a higher ticket item might require, uh, a higher ticket item, it might be okay to get maybe because you're building, if you're in a relationship selling model, you might have to take some time. Well, I will, uh, and I'll push back. If you were selling for me, I would push back and say, I don't agree. You may not get yes to the deal, but you may get yes to you. I want you to get yes to the next step. Right. Right. So, so, and that's a sell. The next yeah. step is yeah. a sell. And in these bigger ticket items where you have a longer sales cycle, let get a specific yes to a specific next step. Right. Instead of maybe, maybe, let me see if I can put you in touch with my boss. That's still a maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's get a meeting set up with your boss. That's a sell. Right. And and, and with with what we sell at Pivot 10, which is training, is a higher mm-hmm. ticket item with a much longer cycle. Mm-hmm. And I'm always selling into the next step, but I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not closing a deal. But today. you're closing the next step. I'm closing Which the next is, step. And, and sales are a series of steps, right? And, yeah. and the challenge is don't get stuck in the maybe on any of the steps. But I think most people, um, most people are afraid to say no. They don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't so that reminds you. me of yes. That reminds me of yes and versus yes but. People yes, yeah, yeah, people <laughs> yes but you. Yes. Because they don't want to, they think it's a nice way to say no. Mm-hmm. And yet, because yeah. I've done so much training in this, we hate being yes butted because we feel like we're being shot down and it's a horrible feeling. But we yes but because we think we're being nice. Right. Do you so, see the, see the yeah, irony in that? <laughs> I do see the irony of that. <laughs> so are you, are, how, how are you? And saying no, Gina, are you good at saying no? I am really good at saying no. But you know, it it's taken me a long time, and I think no is more of a issue as a woman with setting boundaries. So if you think about from a, a gender perspective, and this is not all women, so for those of you who are going to have your arms in the air about it, chill, it's all good. I think a lot of us have boundary issues where we say yes to everything because we want to please everybody. So maybe in a sales situation, we might actually say maybe because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings yeah. and we keep taking things on. I finally, and the, the irony is because I teach people the yes and concept of say yes to everything. And that is how I grew my business and my career and my whole mindset. It's a, it's a mindset. 
there was a point though where I had to start saying no because I only have so much bandwidth. Well, it gets back into that yes and as a yes and is a specific yes. Yes, but is not a specific no. It's a maybe. It's a it's a it's a no. It's, it's a no, but it's it's not a no. It's it's you saying no and the other person hearing yes. Possibly. Yeah. Maybe. But Maybe. we we can't do it right now. Yeah. So you leave hope and yeah and all this you know uh, and so the other person is still thinking something's going. Yeah. The whole um, you know you bring up the gender um, question of the, is that an empath behavior then is that um, it could be it it doesn't have to necessarily be. Male versus female, although women, I think, are more empathetic and are well, more likely yeah. to be empaths than men. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think it's male, female, but I think it's, there's masculine behaviors and feminine behaviors, which all, I think, you know, mas- males have some feminine behaviors and women have some masculine yeah. behaviors. And But I, I think, and I, and I think, um, you know, if you look at the other side of the no which becomes the fear of asking for things because you'll get no. And I, I and I think that, um, the fear of the no, there's the power of the no, but there's also the fear of the no. Okay. So here's the thing. If you have the fear of the no, you shouldn't be in sales, nor should you own a business. Well, um, how do you how do you get over that fear of no? See, I think I think, um, and and um, you've you've made the comment before, and we've talked about it. And here's the hate mail getting ready. To, okay, everybody, oh, get your gosh. fingers ready. Oh, <laughs> everybody, get your fingers ready. <laughs> Here come the letters. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about pay inequality between genders. Uh huh. You know, I have a very strong. Position I have a on very that. strong opinion about that. As do uh, I. And and I think. Um, I don't believe it. Um, I think you get paid what you are worth and very importantly, what you ask for. And I think culturally, we, culturally women in general in our culture are programmed or indoctrinated rather to not ask for things. And I think, I think men have more of an indoctrination to ask for things. I, I still see that men don't ask as much, but, so, and why is that? And then because there's this fear of asking part of it, maybe because it's a fear of getting no. Well, it's a fear of getting no because because we, and I'll just collectively say we as, as a gender, I'll speak for, sorry, I, here come the letters. Um, we as women, I think, don't want to shake an apple cart, apple tree, apple cart, whatever. You know, we don't want either one. If we you don't shake wanna... either one, apples <laughs> fall. <laughs> I don't want to probably shake... more from the cart to the tree, but it, either way, it's going to be a mess. I don't want to <laughs> shake the boat. I don't want to rock. The boat. Like, I don't want to rock the tree. I cannot give my. <laughs> I don't want to rock the tree. That's it. That's my new phrase. I don't want to rock the tree, and. We want to, you know, we're the nurturers and we want to keep and the peace. Waters. Yeah, we want to keep the peace. I and want you to like me. Want you to like me. <laughs> Which reminds me of, <laughs> this is so off, this is so off topic. I was watching a Lifetime movie this weekend, which I never do. It was called The Blue-Eyed Butcher. And it was this woman who, like, killed her husband in Texas and, like, stabbed him 200 times. I'm laughing through this. I'm sorry. (laughs) But her person... I I study personality and behavior, so for fun. And she kept saying through the movie, and Lifetime scripts are bad, but I think there was... there's, There's a point to this. Through the movie, she kept saying, Do you think they like me? I just want them to like me. Oh, that's so classic. It's and it was so like, good. you know, when she was like, you know, in court and the jury mm-hmm. and when she got a new lawyer, she's like, do you like me? Look at my lipstick. Like, and I'm I'm making a mockery of it, but I think we do want to keep the peace and we don't want to shake things up. And so we're a little more likely to be empaths and avoiding saying no and avoiding conflict. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to 
asking for more. I've coached a lot of women in this on asking for what they're worth, whether they're entrepreneurs or in their jobs. I'm like, why aren't you asking for more? Well, you know, I just really want this job and it's a good opportunity. I really need a job right now. And, you know, I don't want them to change their mind. And so I'm just going to go with what they're offering. I'm like, no. Would See, a man that. do that? A look man wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Well, see, it's kind of a confusion of no. It's it's com- it's not being able to separate no from oh, what from like from personal. No isn't personal, you know. It no, you know, no is a specific answer to a question. Yeah. But but it's taken personally. So how do you separate the personal aspect from the word? Um, I'm I'm a big believer in general, and you kind of asked this in a different way a couple minutes ago of how do you how do you get better at no and I think it's a practice Mm -hmm. like how do you get better how do you get over the fear I think your question was about fear well like like in improv we from with improv classes what we're doing is we're reconditioning people to be okay with failing so when you get on stage you have to be okay with it's not going to go so great right you know, when, we, and, and that's even, that's an even deeper fear because no, isn't necessarily a failure. Right. But I think there's a stigma attached to it that people think it's a failure. They and combine it's not a no failure. with all these other emotions. I, I, exactly. And, and to me, no is like a gift. You, you told me no, Gina, that means you don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes mm. I might say no, cause I don't like you. I mean, and that 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 that's another good point, yeah. which you know I'm on this. I got relationship selling on my mind because it's part of my presentation. But then I tell this story in this sell like a child talk. When I was a media buyer, I had the sales rep that came. He's a young. He was like a new, fresh, fresh off the, whatever, fresh off the line, coming to be a salesperson, and he was trying to sell me on the all holiday music format on radio because I bought a lot of radio in the Chicago market. Now Mm -hmm. Chicago's big. So there's a lot of radio stations and this is right when they started playing with this all holiday music format. So it was brand new. It was a brand new thing, which now, you know, is done every year all over the country. I was skeptical, right? And I was a young media buyer. And I had a boss that would literally go, Jaina, sales are down. She would literally scream across the office like that. It was an all Italian office, if that gives you any ideas <laughs> of what was going on. So this guy comes in and is selling me on this concept. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't think this is, this is for us. He's like, what? You don't care? What? You don't care about your business growing? I was like, oh, wrong power question and I like I was pissed and I go oh I care I'm like come back and show me some actual stats on this and then we'll talk I'm like but I'm not buying this because it's not proven that's my answer to you and he was just really surly and cocky and I was like oh you pushed the wrong Mm -hmm. person and I called his manager and said here's why I'm not buying I thought you'd like to know and if you'd like my business, I suggest you send me another sales rep. Yeah, and so, so he combined that no with an emotion of an, an emotional response to it. You know, right? Is, and instead of validating, just, instead of validating my concern, right? And and con- and continuing the conversation. And here's the thing: he was the he was a rep that was assigned to me from a previous rep that you know radio sales people like they were like the turnover was so high so i had already i i already was buying i was already a client it wasn't that it wasn't a client of the station but but he was trying to sell me a, a, something in their arsenal that i didn't want and jeopardizing the entire relationship mm-hmm. yeah cuz he couldn't accept no right but yeah, that was yeah. his own insecurity his own fears he wasn't mm-hmm. given the tools and i think a lot of times sales um people are not given training and tools for how to overcome this stuff yeah well you you made a point that nobody should be in sales if they're if they're not willing to accept no but to a degree in business we're all in sales we're selling ourselves on a new role 
on a new comp. So I guess I should on, rephrase that and say you shouldn't be living. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong. I'm sorry. Um, because we're <laughs> well, yeah. we're always selling. I mean, I had to just sell something to my husband this morning. <laughs> Let's not go there. But um, I got to yeah. <laughs> It was money related. It was money related. Yeah, but I got a yes. Course. I got a of yes. Of course you did. Of course. You. Yes is people prefer saying yes. Which yeah, is, well, I'm going to have the- to chase them for it now, but <laughs> but I got a yes. Oh, that's Because great. it was a reluctant like, yeah, okay, fine. Ooh, is that really a yes? <laughs> It's, it's a yes. It's a yes. Hey, I cooked him his favorite meal this weekend. I was, I was, there was a lot of strategy going into before I made my ask this morning. <laughs> Got the whole pitch going. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I didn't even have to do much of a pitch because I did, I did, you know, we can, but we can relate this back. I did things that I knew would. It was relationship selling. Yeah, I, it was, I did things that would endear myself to him. That even if he didn't want to say yes, he was going to say yes. There you go. And if he had said no, then you would have known. I would have would asked you, again later. Yeah. Nine no's to a yes. <laughs> exactly. Just, just get them to tell you no again. Exactly. Watch this. So this will be the one episode he listens to. Anyway. <laughs> so, you know, we're, you know, we're talking about asking those questions and you're talking about an improv ability to fail. There's a, there's a woman that mentors me and, you know, she's taught me this exercise about no, and it's pretty effective in any kind of um, aspect, but you know, two people, one person asks, asks questions of what they want and the other person has no choice to, but to say no, every question has to be answered with a no. Mm -hmm. And it's really effective from both sides because one side gets used to saying no and the other side gets used to asking questions and expecting no and removing the emotion from the no. Ooh, ask me some questions so I can say no to you. Uh, Gina, would you, um, every podcast you do, about every minute and a half, um, I'd like you to uh, promote me and my speaking. No. Wow. So, Gina... Um, well, you do a podcast, um, you know, bicycle riding is one of my favorite things to do. So will you do a podcast on bicycle riding? No. <laughs> so Gina, I'm, I'm thinking about going to Europe, um, maybe a luxury trip. Why don't you come along with me? No. No. <laughs> so the exercise can be really fun because you can go into these specific things you want where it's really easy for the other person to tell you no. And then you can do these things where it's really hard for the other person to tell you no. And it, it's fun because it actually works both sides of the, of, the, of the challenge. One, asking the questions that you're afraid to ask. And what happens if you get a no? And then from the other side of the equation, saying no when it's both easy and saying no when it's hard from a leadership perspective, this is actually one of the hardest things to do is saying no when it's hard to say no. And so if you expand it beyond sales and just look at life and leadership and all those different aspects, it's kind of a fun exercise just to kind of reinforce that both asking the power of questions and yeah, yeah, the yeah. power of no. Well, very good. I may, I may use that. I may steal that from you. And I stole it myself, so I may feel use it with my I on. may use it with my CEOs this week. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> they should be able to tell you no, but a lot of them can't. That'll be fun. I think they kind of said no by not answering my survey, but we'll see. <laughs> that was not a no. That was a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so any any other suggestions or tips for our warners on how to get better at the no are just there any embrace, just embrace it are there any good are there any good books on that well oh uh, i you know i ran across one i haven't read it i think i sent you a link to it and it was let me see if i think i have it here on my oh. amazon 
Did you have it? Or? Yeah, power no. Hold on. The power of no. The power of no. Oh, yeah, no. It's one little word. Yeah, go ahead. Because one little word, one little word can bring health, abundance, and happiness. By James All Tucker. Uh, we'll put a link. We'll put a link to that book in our show notes. And I haven't read it, and but it, it it's got some pretty decent reviews, and it's something that I want to take a look at. Um, you know, the uh, a guide to help you take back power, and it gets back into the power. A well placed no can save you time and trouble. And you know, I've got you know, I'm a quotes person, Gina, so I've got all these quotes about <laughs> you know saying no. Um, now I'm going to have to get those quotes too. Yes. Put them in my email signature. Yeah. You know, Warren Buffett, I love this one. The difference between successful people and very successful people is that very successful people say no to almost everything. I love that. So I love what, that. Well, he's got, I mean, Warren Buffett has some great advice in general. I've read a lot of things that he posts on or that have been posted about him on how to be a, a effective leader. Mm-hmm. But part yeah. of that no thing is, again, saying no to things that are not going to serve you or serve your company or serve your business. Right. And then from a sales perspective, if you get the no, you know, know that it's not a no in the long term. It's a no right now. And respect the no. And don't take it personally. Just like, okay, cool. Yeah. On to the next one. On I think, to the next one. I think I think that's the biggest thing for for anyone listening is that to me that's my biggest thing for you is don't take it personally. It is part of the process. People are are going to say no and they're going to object. It's part of the pro- it's not about you. Mm-hmm. Unless it is, but <laughs> But it goes it, it goes back to our number one rule of improv of making other people look good. Right. Yeah. And the making other people look good is about putting them first and thinking of them first. Mm-hmm. Um, this came up once in one of my presentations. I thought this was interesting. It might have actually been one of my workshops in Dallas last year. But someone said, I'm still on page five of the proposal. You're, you've gone to page 50 as the salesperson. Because you're trying to like push through on your agenda, and I'm still trying to digest. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's you and not them, yeah. which is great. It's great for your improv because if you put the focus on them, you know what they feel it, they respect it. That creates more of a relationship. It is about them. Yeah, you you spotlight them and their concerns. Yeah. And their and their wins as well, and continuing to keep the relationship going. And as Dale Carnegie a long time ago said, make sure it's genuine. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Don't be faking it. No. Don't we're fake not, it. We're, we're not faking it here. We're not faking it. <laughs> um, before we wrap up, I do want to throw this one at you, oh mentor of mine. I don't think I've talked to you about this one. So I spoke at a medical conference. Wow. A couple, couple, <laughs> couple weeks doctors? ago. Doctors? Yeah, it was all doctors. It was actually quite a fascinating um, experience for me because I've never actually, I've, I've done some work with, we've done work with nurses. Um, we do work with first year residents. This was the first time I was in a room with like full out, doctors and um, professors of medical schools who are doctors. Did they all have, did they come all with their, like their stethoscopes around no. their neck? So here's this room. I can just see it. They're, they're all in their no. lab coats. with No. Ste- no? Oh, no. damn. Okay. No, no, they did not. Um, so <laughs> we were, we were talking about the power of, of improv for empathy for healthcare and how you could improve patient care. By being more empathetic and not just processing the patient, which do you think about this in sales, right? Sometimes we're, if you have a transactional model and you're just processing and you're really not paying attention to the relationship. So long story short, one of the doctors reached out to me and asked for 
you know, can you give us a quote on doing this kind of training with our residents? Cool. Very good. I never, I never respond in an email with, yeah, it's this amount of money you want to buy. Like, it's just, that doesn't work. So I always go for the, let's get on a call. Let's, you know, let's talk about this. Let's talk about your desired outcomes. Let's get more information. Um, because in that presentation, we talked about the success that we had in our local market partnering with a hospital. And so someone from the hospital was actually in that presentation, was part of my presentation. So we were able to give stats on why this is important for other hospitals to be doing. So they, they got that. So there's a piece of it of this should be recurring. This shouldn't just be a one-time kind of thing. So that was sort of my question back to us. You know, we need to talk more about how you see this going before I can just give you a number. And her email response was, well, my director has to approve this. And my, an- and my answer was approve the conversation. I mean, I was asking for a conversation and that's where it kind of like stalemated. Like I was like, well, here's, here are the questions I would want to explore with you. So now I got to go back in and now I'm just going to hardcore get on the phone and be like, all right, let's talk. Like I'm going to chase it a little bit. Well, it's, you know, we didn't talk a li- We didn't talk anything about this, but and there was a, a Harvard study years and years ago about email and negotiating via email and that in, in negotiating via email, usually both parties end up with the worst situation Ooh. and a no disguised as a maybe is so easy in email. And the reason being is because email is impersonal, yeah. but trying to get that same, uh, and that's why people don't pick up the phone. Texting is actually probably more personal than email yeah, and, and because it's more direct, it's more synchronous. So um, email, prospecting via email, and I'm so glad that you, you pushed and said, we got to get on the phone because prospecting via email almost always ends up in the world of maybe. And that world of maybe happens because you send me an email and I just like delete it or... It's so easy for me to just to make up, type a little excuse and send it to you. But if you're voice to voice with me, it's so much more connected and personal from your perspective that right. you may not be able to say that. So the maybe trap is huge through an email perspective. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get that person to, uh, how do you get that person on the phone? And well, and here and I got I have to add this piece to it cuz I think this is another piece to it. I actually cuz it was a fairly large group of people that came to this session at this conference so I looked her up and I'm like, "Oh, I remember that person." And she was very very engaged in the session. Um her and whoever she was with and English was her second language. So, you add that as a more another complication in an email. Mm-hmm. So, her response, I need approval, is she wasn't understanding that I'm like, let's talk about it. So I think there was another piece of it that complicated it. Well, that, but it gets right back into your personal and your relationship selling of how do you create a personal relationship? What little aspect of it could be? Listen, there's a, there's a little story I want to tell you. I really don't want to put it down in email. So let's talk. Um, or it could be, I love your accent. And I would just love to hear your voice on the phone. Oh, um, or it could be that you know, there's so many details here. I could it would like take me an hour to write out this email to where it would make sense for for me to write it out. So it would just be, and and then you've got to plow through that. It's like oh, I don't want you to have to do that. It's just going to be easier if we can just talk yeah. for five minutes. And then and then it's again, it's you know, it's about making a contract and sticking with the contract about. We're going to talk for five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, five minutes. When you get them on the phone? Oh, look, we've been talking for five minutes. Uh, are you, are yeah. you okay to go a little bit longer? Yeah. But don't 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 uh, take advantage of them. Well, I think people are, are definitely, I, I had this with another client that I'd been prospecting for years. And when I reached out via email and said, hey, just, well, you know, can we get on a, on a call? And the response was, we have your information. We don't we're not looking for any training. And I was like, I just wanted to catch up with you. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So then it became a catch-up conversation that by the end of it turned into a, can you give us a proposal? Like, I never even offered it. Like, it was asked. Yeah. Because it's, think, it's dis- disarming them a little bit. And if you take a genuine interest in that person... And, you know, what is it about their dog or their child or their vacation or their ski? If you take a genuine interest in that person yeah. and you can talk about something that is of genuine interest to them, then they'll be willing. And More here's likely. And, and here's my other thing for people listening on the when you're dealing with email. Keep in mind, like I already know this in the back of my mind. This goes back to putting people first. This is, I'm talking to a doctor. They have insane schedules. They don't have normal schedules. Trying to, that could be another, and I know that. So I've gone back and forth with some emails, but I know what's going to have to happen next is I'm going to have to make, I'm just going to have to make a phone call. Duh. And now start, you know, continuous like, hey, just thought I'd try to call you, thought this would be easy, you know, faster. Let's, you know, what's a good time to, to talk to you? Because she might not even be reading emails for days. Mm-hmm. And and then make the commitment of a small amount of time. Right. And honor that commitment. Because right. they are. So they're think busy. about that with anyone. People are busy. And people mm-hmm. have erratic schedules in their businesses, depending on their industry. So keep that in mind. And don't think that an unanswered email is a no. That's a good point. Just keep after him. Keep after him. Go for the no. Go for the no. So that, um, I think that that concludes this topic today. Do you have anything no, it, else to add to this? No. <laughs> Do you think I'm pretty? No. <laughs> We're just practicing here. <laughs> Do you want to take me to Paris so we can see Rachel? No. All right, well, then I got to go. I can't. Do you think Rachel's enjoying herself? No. (laughs) (laughs) She's having so much fun. Did we miss Rachel today? No. (laughs) Yes, we missed Rachel. We missed Rachel. Hopefully, she will bring us nice presents. And a beret. And a beret. (laughs) All right, it's time to wrap up. We. We got to go. We. We. We all right, Warners. We gotta go. Keith has gotta go. I gotta go. You gotta go. Uh, thank you for listening to us in your car, or as some women have told me, they listen in their bathroom while they're getting ready for work, and that's pretty effing cool. So, thanks for listening to this episode of Women Your Mother Warned You About. To connect with us and learn more about us, go to Women Your Mother Warned You About dot com, where you can also connect with all of our social media channels there you can download um, free downloads we are excited we're going to be announcing uh, a, a, a pro- you've asked for something to buy and we have come up with something so be on the lookout for that and uh, oh don't forget five star rating and reviews on iTunes would make us so happy we would really appreciate that Keith you have anything else to add how do, how do people connect with you Keith well, they can connect with me via LinkedIn, which you can find my LinkedIn connection on the Women Your Mother Warned You About dot com website. And if you do connect to me through LinkedIn, please mention that you are connecting via Women Your Mother Warned You About because I get trolled a lot from on LinkedIn. Is that the no. right term? Yeah, yeah it is. So. Yeah. And if you're wondering about that, there's another podcast on that. There is an episode on trolling. So just let me know why that you are listening and want to connect. And I would love to connect with you. And five-star ratings, not just on iTunes, but if you have an Android device Uh and you're listening on an Android device as well, you can still give us a five-star rating. Wow, says the iPhone guy. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. Well, I got to go, Keith. You got to go. They got to go. 
uh, for our <laughs> how do I wrap up this show I'm so used to having Rachel here I miss you Rachel but I love Keith too so hey for the best relationships keep it real raw and relevant and this is where Rachel would say do you know bye Keith? Warners <laughs> <laughs> She would say, and a little re- reverence doesn't hurt either. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and a little reverence doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Bye, Warners. Bye, Warners. <laughs> this really will get serious soon. Yeah. I don't, it, it doesn't have to. I don't think anybody wants it to be serious. This has been a presentation of the Seller Die Network. For more podcasts that you can take out into the street and turn into money, visit SellerDieNetwork.com.